It's January 22nd, 2012. This is vlog four. Um, oh, excuse this weird angle here, but this is the only shot where I actually get light. And I didn't want to turn the lights on because I want to conserve some energy for once. So I'm using the sunlight back here from the window. So I got to kind of point in some weird shape. But anyways, um, back to the topic of what I was going to talk about today. Um, Friday, I went to go see the much hyped up movie called Red Tails. Um, as a matter of fact, the only reason why I went is because it was free. Um, the theater had like these reserved seats that was bought by the NAACP out in this area. So it was just like a huge group of black people going to go see this movie that night because we wanted to help up the sales and all that. And, boosted to number one for this weekend since this is the opening weekend for that movie. Um, so I guess I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm kind of like confused about all the hype about this movie. I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, I know it's black history. I know it's an all black cast and it took the director 23 years, I think, to even get it made. Um, which I still don't understand why it took that long. Um, but, I mean, I understand it's black history and all, but I don't understand what the big hype is about it. I mean, we have plenty of films already that's all about black history. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of confused about it. I mean, the story and all was okay. I mean, overall, the movie was okay. It was nothing spectacular. It wasn't like an epic film that you know, it was going to need to get a ton of awards or anything like that. I mean, it was, it was all right. I mean, it could have been better. There were some kinks in it that they could have worked out since it took them 23 years. It should have been perfect, but, you know, every movie has flaws. So you can't, you know, knock down an entire movie because of the little flaws in between. Um, I guess that's the designer in me. You kind of nitpick at the little details and kind of tear it down from there, but... I'm trying not to do that, but other than that, I mean, there was some issues with the casting to me, and some of the people, uh, well, some of my friends on Facebook even noted that they should have casted different people for some of those roles, but still, um, I guess it's the whole thing about Hollywood and their portrayal of um, minorities, like, if you look at Hollywood and the span of all the movies that are in it, it's mostly white people that are in it. And, I mean, it's not too hard to tell if you watch a lot of movies. But, you know, I understand the need for having um, specifically targeted movies like that. Like, um, you know, all the black movies with, you know, Spike Lee and recently... Um, Tyler Perry and his movies, which I really don't think are that great. Um, only one of his movies I actually really like, The Family That Prays. That was like the only good movie he actually came out with, in my opinion. Um, but he was a playwright. He's not really a, a movie kind of a oriented person. He's from plays. But anyways, um, I guess it's just a disappointment to think about Hollywood that they're not as diverse as you would want it to be like if you really think about it now it's either black or white and those are like the two most hyped type of movies out there um, you do get some you know Hispanic and Latino American Mexican American type films um, but they're not as hyped up as like the black films. It's like whenever a black film comes out, it's like, come see it, it's all black, blah, 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 blah. So you don't really see that much amping with the other ethnicities out there, which is kind of a disappointment because I actually like seeing other cultures out there doing films. Um, I normally do watch a lot of like foreign flicks, but I would like to actually see like American. <laughs> You know, Mexican American, maybe some Middle Eastern, maybe Asian, something like that out there in Hollywood. But you really don't see too much of that. And I guess it's because they're not as, you know, boisterous about promoting themselves as like the black community is. It's like we've been put down all these years. It's now it's our time to shine. 
and that's how we are with our entertainment and media. Like we even have our own, you know, cable stations. Like we had BET and TV One, and at one point UPN was mostly all black. And then um, we have a bunch of movie channels, and then we have VH1 Soul, and there's a lot of different venues for us out in cable as far as like black people go. Um, but you know, the Hispanics are coming up too because there's a lot of them in America, so we're starting to see more and more of a medium for them. Like they have their own cable stations, like there's Telemundo and um, a Univision and uh, Nuvo, and then they have um, their own version of MTV, and there's various other like um, Hispanic and Latino um, targeted medias out there in cable. And you know what, that's all you pretty much see on TV. Um, just those three main outlets and you don't really see anything else. Like when are we ever gonna see an, an Asian channel? Or maybe, God forbid, like a Middle Eastern channel, which I don't think was is gonna actually happen anytime soon. Like, um, I'm from Michigan. I don't know if you guys know this, but Michigan has the largest population of Middle Easterners outside of the Middle East. So I grew up around like a lot of Middle Easterners, so I'm used to seeing that culture. Like whenever my family from out of town used to come to Detroit and they would see like Middle Easterners, they would be kind of shocked and would stare at them because they're not used to seeing that type of people around. Um, and we just had like a really high concentration of Middle Easterners. Um, and you know, whenever any security threat ever happened, it was always targeted at Detroit because, uh, you know, we're like the mecca of like Middle Eastern people. So our airport is always on lockdown and I hate that crap. But anyway, they're not bad people and I hate the way how the media portrays them. It's like, when are they ever going to break out in Hollywood? Like, you don't see too many Middle Eastern movie stars out there. You, I mean... When was the last time you've seen somebody of that descent win an Academy Award or an Emmy or anything like that? You don't see too many of them and you can't... And I mean, if I asked you right now, can you think of one actor or actress of that type of descent that, you know, really speaks out to you, you probably couldn't think of a name because you'd really have never seen it before. And whenever you do see a Middle Easterner in a movie on TV, they're always portrayed as some type of terrorist or something of that sort, or some extremists, or something negative. Um, so it's, it's kind of like um, where black people were back in like the 1940s and 50s with the segregation and how they were portrayed in the media uh, as being dumb or slow or anything like that. And that's how a lot of other ethnicities in um, Hollywood are portrayed. Like, um, Recently, I didn't even really discover that there is actually an Asian American market out there. It wasn't until I actually moved out here to California when I discovered it. Um, it was actually on the internet. They're not really on TV or in the movie theaters. Um, I discovered um, this website called Wong Fu Productions, and they do some really good, like, little feature films and I'm just curious as to why I've never seen any of their stuff in the movie theaters or them actually trying to put something on TV because it's actually good quality stuff to watch and it's kind of sad to see that nothing like that is on TV or in the movie theaters right now because it's it's a market that's completely untapped or marketed towards which is really sad and there's a lot of Asians in this country and they're not you know, portrayed in a positive way either. They're either nerdy or some sort of, um, you know, sex siren. So that's not really a, a positive portrayal of an entire race of people. So, you know, I would like to see more of that out there in Hollywood and more amped up. So, like, I didn't even know about it. I just, like, surfed on YouTube and stumbled across that. And I just wish that it was more amped up. I mean, when are all the other ethnicities going to hype up themselves like the black community does? That's the thing. If everybody started amping themselves up, they would probably be more well-known and their stuff would get out more. But, I mean, I mean you do what you can do. Um, 
But still, you need to push harder and fight more to get your stuff out there. I guess that's what my opinion is about that stuff. Oh, yeah, and Indians. You don't see a lot of Indian American stuff beyond, you know, Bollywood. Like, that's their own little separate medium there, but you don't see Indian Americans doing anything. But I guess Bollywood is okay. I mean, that's a... <laughs> That's an interesting medium. Um, I like that. I like, I'm not too big on musicals and stuff, but I could actually sit down and watch that stuff. So I like it. Um, but yeah, you don't really see that in America too often. I mean, it's kind of like a whispered secret kind of a thing going on right now. It's not too big as it is overseas or anything, but you know, it's starting to climb in popularity nowadays. So I guess that's good at least, but you know, I'm just a, I'm kind of saying like other ethnicities need to start pushing themselves out more and getting their stuff out so we could see more of this on TV and then maybe this will start breaking down the stereotypes that everybody's being typecast as so we wouldn't see them anymore. So I guess go out, promote yourselves, hype yourself up, be more boisterous out there, you know, stop being quiet, stop being, you know, undercover. Let people know that you exist and that you're there and that you are ready for people to see this. Um, but, you know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need all these separate outlets. You wouldn't need all this separation of ethnicities in medium. So in a perfect world, we will all be together and, you know, you know, it'll be all kittens and rainbows and, you know, everybody will be on one channel and you could see everybody in one TV show. Like, Friends wasn't, <laughs> like, diverse. <laughs> that would be cool if they had a show like that. A, another version of Friends where it was, like, different races through the whole show. But no, you don't. So it's not kittens and rainbows, and everybody has to be separated now to kind of, like, let themselves be known, which I guess is important. So, um... I guess until then, I guess people just need to start, you know, pushing themselves into being seen. Until then, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> I just hope you guys see this and, you know, promote yourselves better so everybody can see you and you're not just within your community. Everybody sees you. So I guess that's what my point is of this whole vlog is. So, um... I guess that's all I'll talk about. Wow. Um, I didn't really expect to go this long, but I knew it was going to be a long talk because it's an important topic. But anyways, I guess I will talk to you later. Um, my pippy long stocking hair. <laughs> I love my braids. Oh, yeah, my shirt. Gotta support your fellow YouTubers out there. <laughs> And that is so not promoting a positive image of black people if you ever saw that uh, news clip. But it was awesomely hilarious. But anyways, I guess I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. And I will see you then. Bye.